Good morning, Sunisha. It's okay, she's out. Take a seat. I'd rather stand. I bet you would. Hey, it's not funny. I'm not laughing. Then not much. Don't suppose you fancy the pictures later? No. Sit down, Neil. Oh, shut up, I'll sit with you. Only Jackie and Robbie suggested going out as a foursome tonight. Right, as long as I can get this sorted out. Ah, oh, Jackie's made up for us, you know. Why? I'm going to Spain. You told her. Oh, she's my best mate. That must mean Robbie knows then. So? I'm well, being a right knock now. Well, what difference does it make to him? Well, you know what he's like. He'll be lost without me. Mm. He was in before looking for you. I said you'd be in later. He's gone up the bat if you want to see him. Listen, let's go by ourselves tonight, eh? Well, OK. Should we meet in the bar when I've finished? Katie, you know, you're not supposed to do this if one of the doctors come in. I'm talking to a client. You're talking to your boyfriend. Who happens to be a client. He's got a serious medical complaint. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. If there's something wrong with you, step inside and I'll have a look. Well, he's waiting for one of the other nurses. There's nothing wrong with me. I just came in for a chat. I'm getting off now. I'll meet you in the bar later. OK. But if you see our Robbie, don't tell him where I am. OK. Hey, Bertie boy. Yeah, you two are late. We couldn't get a bus. <laughs> you better get a move on here. We've only got half an hour. Is Leo coming? No, I couldn't get the time off work, so it's just us three and your mum. Is she going to meet us there? Yeah, so we can't be late. Oh, I hope uh, Leo's going to cough up his share of the kiss gram when he... What about? Making babies. I want you out of that uniform before your mum gets in from work. There's loads of time for that. No, there isn't. Upstairs and get changed. I want to help me mum. You'll help her by getting changed. I know if she wants a baby, then it's up to me dad to give her one. I just want to help. Are you being funny, young man? No. I should hope not. Well, I've started praying that she'll have one. Every night I pray really hard. Does my prayer make any difference? Because I still feel guilty about what happened to the other one. Come here. No. I'm not angry with you. I just want to give you a great big hug. Get lost, then. Just answer me question. Does my prayer make any difference? Oh, I'm sure they do. Oh, God, give me strength, Anthony Murray. I'll kill you one of these days. I'm going, I'm going. Those kecks are going to last you till the summer. I can't afford a new pair. Don't blame him. It's my fault. <sighs> the knees are on the way out already. <laughs> Shall I put the kettle on? No, I'll do it. You've been working all day. You sit there, I'll do it. Do you fancy staying for your tea? I wasn't going to. Well, the lads are playing five-a-side and Adele's at her mates, and I've got pork chops in. Let me do it, then. No, I'm treating you. Why? No reason. Oh, I see. Somebody's got a favour to ask. Mark! What are you doing? You gave me the fright of my life. What well, did not, but you couldn't hear me. Did you forget your keys? No. No, well, I couldn't get in. You must have put the bolts on the door. Oh, I'm sorry. You on your own? Ray's gone to see Kitty in hospital. Oh, I'm really sorry, Jess. I should have thought. No, it's my fault. No, it's not your fault. It's the scum that got you into this state. Sick little man that's left you too terrified to be at home on your own. <sighs> Have you been? Oh, my mum. Been hiding from me? No. What are you doing in here, then? I'm waiting for Katie. What are you still up to? <laughs> Nothing. Good. Get me a pint in, then. Tell me if it's true. What's true? Well, you're off to Spain, aren't you? All right, cheers, Vic. Are you ready to order? Uh, no, not yet. The uh, guest of honour's only just arrived. <laughs> OK. I'm not the guest of honour. It's your birthday. <laughs> so what's this, then? Voucher. Full body massage. Ooh, warm. It's the 
the place I go to. It's all above board. It's got all the facilities. <laughs> Thanks, Juan. Uh, Yvonne, must have cost you a few bucks. Huh? No, it's not just a thought that counts. It's putting your hand in your pocket. That's what you used to tell your dad, isn't it? Yep. Hey, Mick, you know when your stripper gun comes, you have to see if you can have some of the baby oil. Take it with you. <laughs> yeah, and you should have gallons of the stuff, considering she's a roly-poly. <laughs> Take no notice. Oh, and I hope you'll be chipping in as well, Mum. We had to pay top dollar for her, you know. Yeah, they charge by the weight. <laughs> Jerome, if a stripper gun comes through that door, you're going through that window. I think she'll fit through that door, mate. <laughs> 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 I mean, they reckon I'll be lucky if I get back with a pay for it in the first place. And if I want a quick sale, which I do. I might even have to knock a couple of grand off. <laughs> Can you believe that? A couple of grand after all the improvements I've made. I'd do it to the area. And them little sods, you know, broke into the Dixons. You can bet your life every penny they've got to be spent already. Oh, why, well, yeah, be up the nose or in their arm. Be gone. Like that. But you see, it's us. You know, the poor people left behind. We have to suffer for years. You've got insurance going up and <laughs> house prices coming down. You know, you just keep on paying the price. Month after month, but... Well, do they think about that? <laughs> Did Emily think about that when she was breaking into houses? No, that, that was different. It's not. She was thinking of nobody but herself, just like they did. Just like you are now. Hang on a minute. I was terrified that night. Don't you understand that? Well, of course I do. I haven't slept properly since. Neither has Anthea. I'm scared of my own shadow. There hasn't been one single minute of one single day that my belly hasn't been in knots. I can't face work, but I hate staying in. When I'm left on my own, I cry I'm so scared. Ray's mother's in hospital. And all you can do is sit there talking about how much money you might lose on the house. You are one selfish cow, do you know that? I just fancy a bit of a change. You're lying. I'm not. Look, if that was all it is, you'd have told me before. I'm telling you now. Come on, what's on your mind? It's getting on top again, isn't it? What is? You know. I don't. Look, when we came back from Benidorm, you said no more kickoffs. But it's starting again. It's not. Look, here comes Katie. I don't want to talk about this in front of her. Uh-oh, Clint's in trouble. No, he's not. There's a bit more flexibility as a supply, but you never get a chance to get to know any of the kids properly. You think I'm going full-time? Well, all those paid holidays would be nice. <laughs> Can we get you the drink? Robbie, if I'd been eating crackers all day in the desert, I wouldn't take a drink off you. Goodbye. What is your problem, eh? I don't know. Right, what'll it be? Um, I'll have half a lager, please. Half a lager, please, mate. Do you fancy getting us a chair? I think Clint would rather stand. Was that right, yeah? Yeah. I I'm just going to go to the ladies. I'll see you in a minute. Yeah, see if you can have a word of Florence Nightmare while you're there. What's up with you, eh? You can't even sit down without her say so. Are you letting her drag you out the country? She's not dragging me. I want to go. I don't want to sit down either. But why? I've got this boil on my bum. Why do you want to go to Spain, you divvy? I just don't want any more trouble. There's not going to be any more trouble. It's over. You said that after your glass, Keith, I am. And the next thing you know, we've got brothers and cousins coming at us from all angles. You keep losing it, Rob. You know we started that. You spilled your pints. You took out his eye. But this is different. That time we had to get off. This Ricky, he's just a smackhead. He knows no one. Thanks, mate. Take your own. Thanks. Oh, you saw what he did to Jackie's family. I did, yeah. But who put him up to it? What? So now you think it was me? What can we do in all right here? Because I've got time to go home. Where are you at? Town. I'm meeting some old college mates downstairs. And when we get going, it's lock up your lab to Liverpool. I'll bet it is. Katie, you know, there's no reason for us not to get on anymore. I'm not after Clint. I never have been. No, you were just going to marry him. What happened between the two of you? I'll tell you what happened. Clint pestered and pestered me to get engaged. For months he went on about it. In the end, I gave in. Then I stayed in for two whole years and saved up for the wedding. Lost all contact with my mates. Didn't go out, didn't do anything. They should have been the best years of my life. Still, I'm making up for it now. It must have been what you wanted at the time, though. I'm not even sure he wanted it. Not really. 
And when it came down to making a choice between his brother and me, he still chose his brother. I'm not saying he'll do that to you. He won't. He's a lot older now. I'm just saying be careful. Clint's a nice bloke. It's just the more he stays with Robbie, the more likely he is to get into trouble. Well, you don't have to worry about that. Because in two months' time, Clint and Robbie will be in different countries. How come? Me and Clint are moving to Spain. On our own. Sorted it out, that's all. You did on the same, it was Katie's family and had that back to you up. I know. Because that's what brothers do. I was there, wasn't I? Yeah, but you won't be there next time, now, will you? I just need a fresh start. I really love Katie. Yeah, and what happens if this smacker does get a bit of a team together? Well, I thought you said he won't. What are you two whispering about? I was just telling them I was really looking forward to going to Benidorm. Oh, yeah, me too. I, uh, went into hospital the other day. Is everything OK? Oh, it was just for tests. What kind of tests? Tests to find out why it's so hard for me to get, you know, pregnant. More tests. More thorough tests, yeah. But I thought there was a big waiting list. There is. I jumped it. How? I paid. How much? 1500 Where did you get that kind of money? Bank loan. Oh, why get yourself into more debt when you know you can do it now? You've been pregnant once. Once in seven years of trying. Time's running out for me, Mum. You're young and healthy. I'm 37 in a couple of weeks. I've got to get a move on. But it was worth it, every penny, because they found something. Turns out one of my tubes is blocked. Can they fix it? They can get round it. There's nothing wrong with my eggs and there's nothing wrong with Marty's sperm. We don't want all the details, thank you very much. There's a pair of young ears in the front room, remember? It's the details that matter, Mum. And to cut a long story short, we might be able to get round the problem by going for IVF. Might be able. Nothing certain. They can't unblock the tube. I know you're not keen on IVF. But if it's worked for you once the natural way, the way God intended... <laughs> At this rate, I'll be 43 by the time the natural way works again. Oh, plenty of women have babies at that age. That's with everything being equal. But it's not equal. It gets harder the older you are. There's less and less chance of getting pregnant, more chance of an unhealthy baby, more chance of a miscarriage. I don't think I could go through that again, Mum. I know how much you've suffered, love, and I'd give anything in the world for you to have your own little baby. But if you go down this route, I think it'll be a mistake. And I don't think I can give you my blessing. It's not your blessing I need. I really, really hate having to ask you this. And if there was any other way... You want me to pay for it? I want you to lend me the money. Hi. You've changed. You've noticed. Looking good. You too. <sighs> Cheers. I'm going into town. What's your excuse? It's Nick's birthday. He's 42. So are you out on the sniff tonight, then? I might be. Why are you bothered? Why should I be? I mean, you and me, we weren't anything. Serious, were we? I was just telling Katie I'm too young to get into anything too heavy. Me too. I mean, if you don't enjoy yourself when you're our age, you only regret it when you mix age. He's right. I think he's fallen asleep up there. I'll be joining him in a minute. Yeah, you look tired. I'm knackered. I don't know why. They always do a lot of work. You finish it half three, though, eh? What's that to do with work? I'm missing my beauty sleep. Oh. Are your neighbours playing up again? 
They were playing a banjo last night. A banjo at 3 o'clock in the morning. She got country and western fans living in the flat above. Mm, it could be worse. It could be heavy metal fans. No, it couldn't be worse. How do you like a couple of clowns in cowboy boots line dancing on your ceiling in the middle of the night? Are they? What's up? I spilled sauce all over myself. Only bought this new today. Go and wash it off in the ladies before it dries. <sighs> be a minute. You did want to go to the toilet, didn't you? No. So why are you up here, then? I just came to say hello. You could have done that downstairs. Yeah, but I couldn't have done this, though. Nervous, aren't you? No. Hi, Rob. Hi, Lipstick. Oh, Robbie. What? Um, is it right that you're fitting an alarm for Ron Dixon? Yeah. Um, you couldn't fit one for me now, could you? Oh, sorry, I'm dead busy. OK, still there. Hi, oh, yeah. Hi. I'll pay you back. When? When I can. You're already in debt. If you have another baby, you'll be more hard up. If you don't have one, you'll want to try again. More money. It's not as much the second time. They've got a special offer on, have they? No. When you first try, they freeze all the embryos you don't use. So they're expecting failure? It's a precaution. Have they told you what the success rate is? It's better than the success rate so far. What is it? I'll have three fertilised embryos implanted in me. Three! I can't even manage one at the moment. I can see how tempting this is for you, Diane. Really, I can. And I don't want to get all religious on you. But you're going to, anyway. I'm not. I just want you to see through the words they use. This is not about fertilised embryos. It's about me and Marty having a baby. In a syringe. And not one baby, but three. Three tiny lives in a syringe. And what? Another half dozen in the freezer, like a bag of peas? I'm not listening to this. If you can't help me, then just shut up. Let's change the subject. I want to help. But the Pope won't allow it. Oh, it's not just the church I'm worried about. It's you. You'll go through hell. They'll prod you, they'll poke you, they'll fill you full of drugs and instruments, they'll raise your hope, and in the end, the chances are you'll be disappointed. No, not disappointed. Heartbroken. Heartbroken and £3,000 worse off. <sighs> Don't you think it might be better if you tried to forget about it? <sighs> I know how hard it'll be, but if you could just... Try and accept the hand that God has dealt you and stop worrying about it. You'll be surprised how many women get pregnant once they've stopped trying. And if it doesn't happen, the world's full of unhappy children crying out for parents. Perhaps you could consider adopting. I've done that! Don't you get it? I want one of my own! I'm sorry I lost my temper before. It's OK. No, I know you didn't mean it. No, Margie, I did mean it. While you've been in Belgium, I've had to cope with Emily. I've had to put up with all sorts. And all the improvements on the house you were talking about. Ray did all those. This place was a tip before he moved in. And I think we've done enough now. As soon as I possibly can, I'm going to move back to my old house. And I'm taking Ray with me. I've got to go back to Belgium tomorrow night. That's your problem. <sighs> All I'm saying is don't be surprised if I start to snore as soon as the film starts. I thought you want to go now. Oh, you might as well. It doesn't look like the strip gram's going to turn up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Kip will do me good. Won't get much chance tonight. Butch and Sundance go to the Atlantic every Tuesday. <laughs> oh, happy birthday, Mick. Well, cheers, niece. Sheena, it was my birthday. I don't know. Right, I'm going up to see Jackie. But before I go, I've been thinking about this Spain lag. What about it? Best of luck. Thanks, Rob. We'll have a ball out there. See you later, look after ah! <laughs> See, you'll probably sound about it. Yeah. 
After the pictures, if you want to avoid being woken up in the early hours by Johnny Cash, you could almost stay at ours if you like. Can you guarantee me a night of uninterrupted sleep? Maybe not totally uninterrupted. <laughs> <laughs> Child. I've got three already, and I wouldn't change them for the world. Neither would I. It's not that there's anything wrong with them, it's just that I feel there's something wrong with me. I'm not complete. I've never given birth. I've never felt a child move inside me. I've never held my own newborn baby. I don't know what a cross between Marty and Diane looks like. All I want is to experience those things. Why can't I do that? What's wrong with me? Is God punishing me for stealing another woman's family? Don't be daft. I just want to be like other women. And you can help me. I know why you feel iffy about it, but ask yourself this. What better use can you put your money to than helping to create a new life? Listen to yourself, Diane. Money to create a life. That's God's job. Well, God's on strike. What have we come to? It's greed gone mad. You can't turn money into a life. You can now. You need love. Love like you and Marty have. It, it's beautiful. It's natural. It's the love between a man and his wife, not a test tube and a syringe. It's not beautiful anymore or natural. It's a chore, a routine. It's driven by the calendar. How natural is that? It's got nothing to do with love. When we're on the job, I'm not thinking about how much I love my husband. I'm thinking, is this the one? Is this it? Even when we deliberately do it at the wrong time of the month to try and pretend it's just for us. At the back of your mind is the nagging thought, well, stranger things have happened. There's no love in the way we make love anymore, Mum. And I want that back. I want the pressure off. And the only way that can happen is if we have a baby. That's why I'm pleading with you. Please lend me the money. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Just go, then. I wish I had the words to make you understand. Oh, I understand, all right. I think you're making a mistake. And I have to listen to my conscience. Well, you don't have to listen to your daughter. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'd strangle her with her rosary beads. That's you're talking about. I had no right to put her in that position, so shut up, Marty. Drop your pants, please. I'm not dropping my pants for you. You were all for it last week, and now you're trying to put me off. It's Saint Bridget, our Lady of the Immaculate Conscience. Shall I tell her to sling her up? You know my Fred? Yeah. Well, he's not really mine. He's Lancer's. There'll be no Brookside tomorrow night, but on Friday there's a double episode from 8 o'clock. And don't forget, you can chat to Neil Davis, who plays Robbie Moffat, in a few minutes. Log on to channel4.com forward slash talk. Next on 4, it's Driven. It's all gone. Hmm. How are you feeling? Oh, zippity doo dah. You're not going into work then? What? Not going into work? No. Adele was saying she was going to ask Jackie Corkill about a job in the garage this morning. Was she? Oh, come on, Di. It won't take us long to save up. It'll take us years. I'll be a grandmother first. Have you with that? I can do it myself. Come here. Ah! Oh, it's a sheet of plastic. It's not a bloody bag at all. 
Your mother should be ashamed of herself, putting you through this. She had her reasons. I could strangle her with her rosary beads. That's my mother you're talking about. I had no right to put her in that position, so shut up, Marty. Sorry. <sighs> she hates me now, Father. But that doesn't worry me. Every mother knows that feeling. The hardest thing about loving your kids is having to say no to them. Sometimes you say no because you can't afford to give them what they ask for. And sometimes you say no because you don't want to spoil them. But I can afford it. And she's been having no said to her every month for nearly seven years. She is not a spoilt woman. <sighs> I'm sorry, Father. I just get a bit upset when I think about what she's going through at the moment. I'll be OK in a minute. I'm old enough now to know that it's not always a case of right versus wrong. It's sometimes a case of wrong versus less wrong. I know that. And when I've talked to you about it, what you've said made sense. It is man playing God. It's Frankenstein stuff. Designer babies, it's the thin end of the wedge. It's wrong. I know it's wrong. But when I try and explain it to her, it doesn't come out right. To be quite honest, it sounds feeble. I think what I'm confessing to is doubt. I'm not sure what the least strong thing is anymore. Morning. 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 Um, shall I put some toasting for you? No, I don't want to put you to any trouble, Ray. Well, it is no bother. No, I'm fine. I'm you just... sure? Yeah, yeah. Just sort yourself off. I've had mine. Would you order about some cereal? No, I'm OK. Well, there's plenty of milk I've been at myself this morning. She doesn't want anything, Ray. Oh. I'm sorry. Maybe just a piece of toast, eh? If she had the money, she'd just go ahead and do it. She'd do it. She wouldn't have to ask me. And the money she wants to borrow, she doesn't know it, but it was supposed to be for my funeral. I didn't want her to have to worry about paying for it when I'm gone. Because you need money to die these days, Father, just as well as to be born. I wish she had the money. I wish she could get it from somewhere else, then I wouldn't be faced with this dilemma. I don't know if that's selfish or cowardly or proud or what, but it's what I feel, and, and, and it's got me torn apart. And if she could get the money, and a baby was born, I would love that baby. And I know you, Father, you'd welcome it into the church, you'd baptise it, I know you would. So it's all to do with money. The money is more important than the morals. It would be easy to be the most devout, obedient Catholic in the world. If only my daughter was richer. What are you doing in here? I work here. No way. I'm waiting for you, the nurse. Me and her have swapped. Drop your pants, please. I'm not dropping my pants for you. It's nothing I haven't seen before. Well, you're not going to see it again. I thought you were in a lot of pain. Well, what would you do to it? Just a quick cut. No chance. You're going nowhere near me with that. Right. Do you want me to look at this boil or not? Oh, well, they'll have the time of their lives. You were only out there for a week, and that was on holiday. Hey, long enough to get a feel for the place. Yeah, well, it's not all sand and sun when you live out there, you know. Oh, you just don't want them to go, do you? Look, he'll never get work out there without me. And if he does, it'll be hard graft. Long hours, bad wages. They won't be living on no yacht. They'll be stuck in some minty hard gaff. No air conditioning, so they won't be able to sleep at night. Cockroaches like that. Grief from the locals. Hey, the locals are definitely friendly. To tourists, yeah. But they're out there to work. To pinch Spanish jobs. They're not so friendly, then. 
This Jodie couple we knew out there worked in a bar. Well, they ended up in hospital. And she got raped. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm not saying that's going to happen. That was an extreme case, obviously, but... And you want me to have a word with her? Well, on a QT, yeah. <sighs> a thumb boy. A pig in muck. A dog with two bones. Larry, add them all up. Times them by ten. And that's how happy we are, aren't we? Sometimes I've no idea what it is you're talking about. Oh, I'm just telling them how happy we are. And it's all thanks to you, Bev. You owe me one. Oh, I owe you more than one. Ow! What's the fuck? You can't do that! Oh, that really hurt that. Oh, you broke the skin. Let me see. Ow! What's to do with you? Is this how English women treat their husbands? You two have got to start being more careful in public, do you hear me? Oh, I can't clench my fingers. Lance, are you listening? I don't do listening when I'm in agony. That form we filled in is sitting on some desk right now. Now, any one of that immigration lock could turn up at any time. This is a public bar, remember? Anyone could be spying on us. So from now on, no holding hands, no snogging, no physical affection of any kind. <laughs> Four hour shift, so I'll be back by five, the latest. Oh, I'm only at the other end of the phone if you want to chat. I've got little Beth for company, haven't I, girl? Stop! Hey, take it easy, soft dollies. There's another one in 20 minutes. Sorry about that. You scared me off to death. Who is he? Oh, it's only Fred. Hey, you scared Andy to get off to death, eh? Sorry. Are you all right? Yeah, you just made me jump, that's all. Who is he? I don't know. His name's Fred. I think wants to be more careful, scaring the living daylights out of people like that. You're running for the balls. Anyway, I've got to get a few bits from the garage. Before you go, um, I just want to say I'm sorry about that business the other week. Thanks. It must have been awful for you. It was. How did you feel at the time? Scared. I'm not surprised. How are you now? Well, it's still a bit jumpy, you know, it... It knocks your confidence. What kind of world is it to bring up kids in? That's what I worry about. It's the only one we've got. But there are still some of us with a bit of decency and morals left. Thank God. The devil doesn't get all his own way, you know. <laughs> oh, I won't keep you. I've got to go and see our die. Take care of yourself and give my regards to that husband of yours. Thanks. See ya. Oh, she's nice, isn't she? Yeah. Who is he? I've never seen him around here before. He's Brazilian. It's the one who married Bev. How long has she known him? To be honest, I think he's Lancey's fella, really. Don't tell anyone, but I think she's only married him so he can stay in the country. <laughs> I wouldn't put anything past that one. Mm, anyway, should we give him my cards if I don't get in? Mm. See you later. Are you a good girl for your nana, OK? See you later. Oh, that was quick. Oh, she's off sick, apparently. I don't know whether to go around and see her or not. the hell night in my life what you said to me and I can't say that there is an awful lot of truth in it <sighs> look before I get off I just well, I want to just know I'm sorry and I do I appreciate everything that you've done for this family I'm so sorry if I haven't shown it enough I mean I should have known better and I should have come home more often but the truth is, I couldn't face this house. Now you're in the same boat. Oh, Jess, I should have realised, and I am so, so sorry. It's nothing really to do with you. You just got caught in the firing line. I just can't seem to get over what happened. I know. Oh, I know. I'll get that on my way out. Marty. What? Thanks for this. You made enough sacrifices. I'll have to go. See you tonight. See you tonight.
Lucía. You've got a bit of a cheek, haven't you? Is she in? Yeah, she is, funnily enough. She took the day off. She didn't sleep well last night. She was a bit upset. Can't think why. Marty, who is it? It's St. Bridget, our lady of the Immaculate Conscience. Shall I tell her to sling her up? I just want a quick word, love. Send her in. Are you sure? Yeah, go on, you're late. Don't you upset her, OK? Shouldn't you be at school? <sighs> Chocolates, eh? If you can't get pregnant, get fat. Don't. Marcy brought these over in his dinner hour. This is two years I've been giving these up for Lent. Must be a terrible disappointment to you. No. Take your coat off. I'll put the kettle on. Lance and Fred really get on well, don't they? What makes you say that? It's obvious. Look, Rach, I think you better sit down. OK. No, you're going to want to sit down. Because what I'm about to tell you is going to blow your socks off. What's happened? Well, it's supposed to be a secret, OK? But I know I can trust you. Well, go on. You know my Fred? Yeah. Well, he's not really mine. He's Lance's. Lance and Fred are a couple. I know. Bit of a bombshell, isn't it? Uh, yeah, a bit. Oh, lovely, naive, innocent little Rach. Should have seen the face on you then. Don't you ever change, OK? OK. You see, Lance and Fred are madly in love, but they can't be together unless Fred stays in the country. And Fred can't stay in the country unless he marries someone. And he can't marry the person he's in love with because the person he's in love with is a fella. So, it was snookered. Completely snookered. Until I came up with my brilliant brainwave. Did you get the idea of Emmerdale Fan? No. Thanks. I rang you this morning. I've been out all day. I wanted to apologise. There's no need. There is. I should never have put you in that position. I could blame it all on my hormones, but it'd be a lie. I tried to use emotional blackmail on you. I'm sorry. It's me who should be saying sorry. Here you are, Jess. Get that down, yeah. This is pathetic. I am absolutely pathetic. You've just been through a massive shock. They had a meeting, humble pies, enough to knock anyone for six. <laughs> eh, and you better have the man's size, Andy, too. Well, I'm about to apologise to you in a minute. You've got nothing to apologise to me about. Oh, yes, I have, for taking you for granted. And I've just been telling Jess, I don't blame you if you both want to move back to her house. Oh, that's definite now, is it, love? I think so. Eh, look, I better um, start packing my bags, otherwise I'll miss my flies. If you need anything, give us a shout. Is that really what you want to do? Don't you? Well, you know me, Jess. I'll follow you wherever you want to go. So I understand how you feel. But the fact is, what happened to us was very, very rare. And the chance of it happening again is, is minute. But nowhere where you want to move to, nowhere, will there be a guarantee that it won't happen again. So, you were all for it last week, and now you're trying to put me off? I'm not. I'm just making sure you've thought it all through properly. I've thought of nothing else. Yeah, well, I ain't be much work out there. Plenty of sun, now, And the wages won't be up too much. Oh, and I'm Mrs Job Satisfaction in our place, aren't I? But what if things don't work out with you and Clint, eh? They will. You really love them, don't you? If it doesn't work out, I'll have a bronzy and I'll have seen a bit of the world. What's the downside? You're right, there isn't one. I can't wait, Jack. I really can't wait. Oh, well, in that case, I am maze off for you. Cheers. Cheers. I went to confession this morning. I 
felt guilty about what had happened. There's no need. I kept thinking about what you'd said, about what having a baby had mean to you. Forget it. It did mean a lot to me too, you know. I know. Anthony was four when he arrived on the scene. He was walking, talking, toilet trained. I've never had a baby grandchild to coo over or to push to the shops in a pram. I'm sorry. I get a bit self-centered sometimes. A baby would mean a lot to all of us. Do you know, Anthony prays now every night for you to get pregnant. I think his whole faith depends on it. He still blames himself for the miscarriage. And I know the other two have got their fingers crossed. We all want the same thing. I know. They're good kids. Them three kids and your husband are the best thing that ever happened to you. <laughs> well, I'm not looking to replace them. That's what Father Pat said when I spoke to him this morning. <laughs> Only because that's what I told him after I lost the baby. And he said that, strictly speaking, the church is against your marriage. It shouldn't exist. Years ago, if you'd have married a divorcee, he'd have had to turn his back on you. Today, even though the church still disapproves, he can get away with turning a blind eye. He also said that the church used to be against Bibles written in English and for the burning of heretics. Are you trying to tell me that you've changed your mind? No. I'm telling you the church has changed its mind on all sorts of things. Well, so have I. I should never have asked you for your money. You've got plans for it. It's yours. Foolish plans to do with pride, which is a sin, of course. Even so. I'm saving it for a fancy funeral with all the trimmings. I wanted to relieve you of the burden, you see. But there's only one burden you need relieving of, isn't there? If I cash me shares today, you'll probably have the money by the weekend. I mean, I'm made up for Lance and Fred, but... You starting to regret it? No, it's nice to do a favour for a mate. Beverly McLaughlin, you've got a heart of gold, you have. Uh, McLaughlin Gonzalez, remember, wars have ears. Sorry. I mean, it's dead fashionable at the moment. Everyone's doing it in Hollywood, and, well, I'm all for being politically correct, but... That's not fair, is it? The way they treat them differently from us, just because they're not normal. But, well, it's not exactly the wedding I've dreamt of since I was a little girl. I used to run around the house with the nets on my head. <laughs> it doesn't have to last forever, does it? You'll get another chance. Nah, I mean, you've found your Mr. Right. Lance has found his. <laughs> Looks like even they found theirs. Pack it in! Oh, come on, we're only having a laugh with you. Yeah, that's all it boils down to. <laughs> you should be on my side. I am. Why are you laughing? Because it's funny. It's not. Oh, look, they're falling out now. No, we're not. Can't even move to Spain at this rate. Why not? Well, let's be honest, like, your relationship's been going off the boil a little bit, hasn't it? It's not funny. It's really sore, you know. Hey, you know where that is, don't you? <laughs> but he's just had it last. Oh. Hey, Bev. <laughs> Tell your lance to keep his hands off me, brother, will you? Hey, you're better than him. No, you're all sorted, aren't you? But the day I married Fred, the day I finally admitted to myself I'd never find Mr. Right. It's just I was stuck on my own in the house, and I thought, well... Oh, don't worry. I know exactly how you feel. I know you do, and that makes all the difference. Are you sleeping any easier, Aunt? No. I keep waking up in a lather of sweat. You know what? I wish I could get my hands on them. I had that stupid Bridget woman asking me what it was like before. I mean, how do you answer that? You can't. That's why I'm glad you and Ray are here. I don't have to explain things to you, Sue. You really need good neighbours around you at a time like this, don't you? You certainly do. I mean, I'm sat there on my own with the baby. It's my home. I'm safe. I'm not going to let them drive me out. Yet here I am. It's pathetic. No. It'll take us a while to get over it, but we've got to make a stand. We can't let the thugs win. That's why I've decided we should buy the bungalow. We'll show them. They're not going to beat me. Good for you. So, did you have a word? Yep. And what did she say? She's still going, and there's nothing anyone can say to make a change of mind. Oh, it's up to them, isn't it? It'd be all right. And if they really want to go, there's nothing we can do about it. So how's the pain in the bum? It's nothing I can't handle. He's talking about the brother, not the boil. <sighs> Katie, 
I've told you I've got nothing against you two. Hope you have a great life together. I'm just glad you're getting away from that psycho brother of his. I can't take your funeral money. Then borrow it. I wouldn't feel right. I don't intend to need it for a while. But if something happened... Don't want a fancy coffin or anything elaborate. Who are you kidding? A simple service is all I ask. Look, I can't take your money, and that's that. Then I don't believe you really want IVF. I want it all right. But not as much as I want a fancy coffin. It might not even work. I might not die for 30 years. Oh, you've got at least 30 years. You're fit as a fiddle. Then you've plenty of time to pay me back. So, will you take the money? It doesn't feel right, Mum. No, it doesn't feel right. And I haven't done a complete U-turn in the last 24 hours. I still feel uneasy about it. I'm not happy that it's all to do with money. I'm not happy about all them little babies in test tubes in freezers. And I still believe absolutely 100% in the sanctity of life. So do I. If I had the choice, do you think I'd choose IVF? If you take my money, you get a choice. You get a chance to try it. And it will be hard and it will be upsetting. It might not work and it is a sin. But it's a sin I think I can forgive myself for. I can't ask you to give up your principles and your money for something that might not even work. If it doesn't work, at least we'll all know we did our best and we can all move on. <sighs> but if you don't try and you never get pregnant, I'll always feel guilty. I'll always feel responsible. I'll always wonder. And I don't think I can forgive myself for that. So please, for my sake, Will you take the money? <sighs> Let's just go for one to celebrate your mum's conversion. It's still in my work, do you? So am I. Oh, you're a fella. Dad, once we start this IVF lark, it's going to be all bran flakes and fruit juice. Let's just push the boat out while we can. <laughs> Having a drink at Bev's bar with Christy and Steve is not my idea of pushing the boat out. Well, we don't have to stay long. Why don't you and me go into town and really celebrate? I've told them we'll meet them now. Oh, well, you go and have a couple with them and follow us home. Give me a chance to get ready. See you, Laura. Hi. Well, you do need a head start. Ha ha. I'll go and ring my mum and see if our aunt can stay with her as well. I've got to apologise to her. Last time I saw her, I gave her a bit of a mouthful. Remember to thank her and all. So what was it made her change her mind? Uh, nothing in particular. I think she just realised how much we wanted her when she saw Anthea out with her granddaughter. Oh, and uh, Father Pat took her confession. What difference does that make? Because if it had been Father Mike, it'd have been picking the nuns outside the front door by now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, did you know Katie and Clint are moving to Spain? Yeah, Rachel said. It's all right for so many. Jackie was trying to put me off yesterday. Why? I don't know. She said it might be hard trying to find work out there. Do you think we're doing the right thing? Yeah. It was weird, really. Cos when I first told her she was made up for us, then it was suddenly like she's had second thoughts. You're not having second thoughts, are you? No. Me neither. I can't wait. All yours? Yeah, all time. I wish you'd mind your own business. What are you going on about? You've been working your head on Jackie about Spain. How do you mean? Trying to get her to change Casey's mind. Oh, says who? I know the way you work. Is that right, yeah? Look, I don't want to fall out with you about this. Well, why should we fall out? But you better get one thing straight. And what's that? Me and Casey are gone, and there's nothing you can do about it. All right? What's all that about? Do you think I'd butt you? My own brother? Look, I just want you to understand. Whatever you say, we're still going. Yeah, well, I'm going too. To the bar. I'll see you later. Show all 
time. Like every time I'm in public, I've got to act like some happily married woman. No one else I'm supposed to be. Mm, it's just it, I don't know. And they're all different, aren't they? So, so just be yourself. Tell you what, it's hard work if I can marry Bliss just in case someone might be watching. Any minute now. I can't work him out, you know. I mean, usually he swears by the swan, but tonight he insisted on coming here, didn't he, Steve? Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, this is his favourite pub. I don't know what's got into him. Hey, what do I owe you? Are you sure? Yeah, of course he is. Practically family now, aren't you, love? Well, he holds your horses, you. It's early days, yeah. What can I get you? Lager. Aren't you forgetting something? Pint of. Him and that horrible cow Jackie Dixon are made for each other. I don't know. I think he's a bit of a hunk, actually. Oh, he's got the manners of a pig. Never mind that. Have you seen him before? No. Oh, he's just asked me if I was the owner. So? So, I just think he looks a little bit suspicious. He's besotted. <laughs> and I'm sick of hearing your name mentioned. Oh, you're having me on. Seriously? He's well into you. So, what are your thoughts on weddings, by the way? I mean, a registry office, or has it got to be the full works? Hey, yeah, shut up. He's coming in. Hi, lads. Hi, Christy. Um, usual, is it? Uh, yeah, go ahead, then. Full works. Coming right up. <laughs> what? Jackie. Hi, love. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you. It's about Adele. Oh, she's staying at a mate's tonight. Oh, and you know she asked me about the job at the garage. Oh, there isn't a problem, is there? She was made up when you said she could do it. No, there's no problem. It's just I've got to get this form filled in. It's for the council. You know, because she's still only 15. Do you want me to pass it on to her? Well, no, it's for us too, really. You know, employer and parent. Will it take long? No. Well, come in then. We'll do it now. She can't wait to get started. <laughs> Well, to Bridget's wallet and the miracles of modern science. I drink to that. Mm. You're gonna have to be careful now, our kid. Because now you owe her one. Yeah, I know I do. And that is the last woman on earth you want to get on the wrong side of. Oh no. That's the last woman on earth you want to get on the wrong side of. <laughs> hey, I hope you're treating her right. I'm not treating her at all. They'd be treating me if I went anywhere near her. You can't keep your eyes off her. Yeah, in a car crash kind of way. Oh, take the notice of him. He was all over her in Southport. No way! You know what? I think she fancies him and all, you know. Why do you think that? I don't know. It's just a feeling. Mm, she has been asking about him. <laughs> yeah, well, I dabbled. I told you! Just only the ones. And she knows the score. Plenty more fish in the sea, and I'm Jack Cousteau. <laughs> you do that one, move on to the next. Explore the waters, keep swimming. That's my motto. Wait. You'll get you still playing footy stuff? Yeah. You're not cute stuff. Hey, what's wrong with you? What you want? Still on that team? Yeah. Any chance of a game? No. Why not? Because we don't need any new players. Every team needs new players. Yeah, well, not ones that play like you. Well, how do I play? Dirty. Says who? Says you. Remember, you told me yourself it's your own stew. Oh, I remember, yeah. yeah. Look, I don't like you and I don't trust you. <laughs> oh, stop it, will you? You're breaking my heart. Dixon's in hospital because it's something to do with you. If you say that again, I'll rip your throat out. <sighs> I don't think so. Just keep your mouth shut about what happened that night. Or what? I think you're some sort of hard case with your mates behind you. No. Big man, yeah? Bigger than you. You're nothing but a grease monkey. You're a spanner merchant, that's all. Hey, yeah. Hiya, how was you? Oh, I was bored out of a skull. You know what hospital visiting is like. You can't just send three words to each other. Yeah, Steve was just telling me how worried he is about him. Well, there's no need. He's getting better all the time. He's having physio and everything now. <laughs> oh, nice one. Do you know what? You should come in and visit him. We've made up to see someone's often for a change. Yeah, I might just do that. And maybe he'll put you straight about a few things. Maybe I'll do the same for him. <laughs> Everything all right? Yes, yeah, sound. It's been terrifying for you when you're going through it all. Yeah, it was. I had an uncle had a breakdown once. It took him years to get over it. In fact, to be honest with you, he was never the same afterwards. Jimmy's fine. Tough as old boots, eh? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That's what they say, don't they? Yeah. Me and my fella are going into town tonight. It's a long time since we've done that, I can tell you. But you've got to make the effort every now and again, haven't you? And we do have a laugh together. 
What's the matter? Nothing, I'm sorry. Have you finished the form? What's up? Take no notice of me, love. I'm just being stupid. Jackie. It's nothing. Are you sure you don't want to talk about it? No, you're going now, Sim. You've got to get ready. <sighs> well, that'll take me all of ten minutes. Come on, what's the problem? It's Jimmy. What about him? <laughs> he wants a divorce. Right, same again. Oh, no, not for me. I'm going to shoot off. Got some stuff to sort out. Um, will you tell me when to put my tea in the oven? Uh, you'll have to fend for yourself tonight, mate. Me and Air are off out. You don't want one either? Oh, no, I'll stay for one. It takes a couple of hours to get ready for a night out. <laughs> right, two pence of lager then, please. Right. I'll see you. See you, mate. I finished work at six today. Oh, aye. Do you fancy doing something? Uh, no, no, sorry. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a bit busy. Oh, well. Your loss. Not that desperate. She must be. He's making notes. So what? Well, can't you see? He's making notes. He must be from the immigration. The threat's not even here. Look, I can't believe they've sent someone round already and my husband's nowhere to be seen. I should never have got involved in this. Well, they can't expect you and Fred to be together all the time. Your husband and wife, not Siamese twins. It's too early. I'm not ready for this. If he asks me a question now, I am going to blow it. I know I am. This is a disaster. my fault, really. I blame myself. That's the last thing you want to do. It's a sickness, Jackie, like any other sickness. You wouldn't blame yourself if you got tonsillitis, would you? <laughs> you don't understand, love. How can it be your fault? I saw all the signs, but I didn't do anything. If I'd got help, proper help, and got it sooner, it may never have reached the stage where he was being sectioned. And that's where it's all started to go wrong between us when he went into hospital. Things have never been the same since. He's got us into his head that I'm part of his problem and he thinks he'd be better off without me. After everything you've done for him? He wouldn't be able to manage without me, I know he wouldn't. Of course he wouldn't. He won't be able to cope. You'll realise that soon enough. And he'll come running back with his tail between his legs. How can you be so sure? Well, I can't, but I bet it's just a temporary thing. You'll come to his senses eventually. It's an illness, and people get over illnesses. They get better. <laughs> Not always. I'm just going to... All right. All right, Steve. What are you doing here? Just thought I'd come and see how you are. Oh, that's very good of you, matey. I'll have a seat. So, um, how are you? Yeah, not bad. Good. Well, I'm a bit fed up, like. So, how about yourself? How's chicks with you? Oh, I can't complain. Got a bit of a bad throat, like, but apart from that, you know, I haven't got loads of fitness to run around after me. Yeah, there's always a silver lining. I'm gonna have to buy a new pair of shoes for years. Is that how long you're gonna be in for? No, it was a joke. Oh. It just depends how I get on with me physio. You know, all being well, I could be out in a month. What have you got you doing? Well, at the moment, I'm moving myself along the parallel bars. And when I've got that off, they want me on crutches. By the time I get out of here, they want me on sticks. A month, eh? Well, hopefully. I mean, it might be a bit longer. Christmas seems like it is gone now, doesn't it? <sighs> Tell me about it. Look, what exactly happened that night after you got in the car? <laughs> Hey, do you fancy going away for a few days? Where to? Well, it's Paddy's day tomorrow. We can get off to Dublin. <laughs> Just like that? Yeah, I could do with a break. I'm sick of it round here. Come on, I'll treat you. You can blame me away. No, my treat. I'll flush it in a minute. How come? Well, I just got weighed in for that job at the building site and speak. So what do you reckon? Do you fancy it or what? Yeah, it's your right, I do. <laughs> anyway. By my reckoning, she'll be just about at the bathroom by now. Time to make tracks. You've got choosing the clothes and putting on the makeup. You've got bags of time. Oh, no, I'm going to get off. Hey, big night tonight, mate. And people wonder why I got divorced. You stay out when you like, you go home when you like, you do what you like. That's the life for me. 
each to his own. And I think my own is sitting right over there. Time for Christy to go fishing. Don't forget your rod. Never leave home without it, mate. So, what do you think? Just go over there. Casually ask him how he is, what he does for a living, you know, that sort of thing. He'll just get suspicious. Whatever, you're the landlady of the pub. What's suspicious about you chatting to a customer and making them feel welcome? Oh, I can't do it, Lance. I'll let something slip. I know I will. Go on, you go and talk to him. Oh, babe, I'm not being funny. But if I go over there and start talking, chances are he'll be out the door like a shot. Brilliant. That's what we'll do then. Go on, get over there. Mm, the things I do for you. Hey, things I do for you, more like. The problem is he won't talk to me anymore. I can't make him see sense because he refuses to listen to me. He walks around the house as if I'm not there. How can I ever bring him round if I can't even talk to him? Could Lindsay have a word? <laughs> You'd think so, wouldn't you? Well, can't she? It's not that simple, though. <laughs> Has she tried? No, it's no good. You know what fellas are like. They won't listen to reason, will they? No, he thinks he wants a divorce. And that's that. But they left you. Well, there was no point in him staying. You could have been dead. Yeah, but I wasn't. And they could see that. OK, they panicked. They got off. But they called an ambulance as soon as they got a chance. You were unconscious at the time. How do you know what happened? Well, I'm here, aren't I? The ambulance came. Why wouldn't it be what happened? I don't know. I just... All I know is I don't trust them. Listen, Steve. I admit, I've had my doubts. Stuck in here for weeks on end. There's plenty of time for your mind to go wandering. But I'm telling you, Robbie has been sound through all this. And he's been in a few times to see me. Which is more than you can say. And he's the one who came up with the stolen taxi story. Yeah, which shows what type of mind he's got. Sharp. That's what type of mind he's got. I tell you what, mate, if he wouldn't have come up with that story, I'd have been in bigger trouble than I am now. And so would Tim. He'd have gone down for even longer. Robbie did us a favour, mate. Oh, he did himself a favour? Yeah, OK, fair enough, yeah. But you can't blame him for that, can you? He's just threatened me to keep me mouth shut. You're not going to grass, are you? No. Look, I can see why you're knocked. There was no need for that. But I can also see why Robbie's worried. And if you ever did say anything, all four of us would be in big trouble, especially Tim. He doesn't care about Tim. He's a shark. He's only looking after number one. Listen, Steve. Do you know when we got in that car, we all knew that Tim had pinched it. I mean, I was bladded. I was off me face. But I knew what was going on. And you did and all. But you didn't get in. You did the right thing and I'd take me hat off to you. But I got in. Because I couldn't be bothered to walk the six miles home. Do you know when I woke up? I thought I'd never walk again. Today, it took me half an hour to do six steps. <laughs> Dragging myself along those parallel bars. And my arms are still aching from taking the weight. I screwed up big time, Steve. And I've tried to blame other people. But the truth is, I'm to blame. It's my fault. Not Clint's, not Tim's, not Robbie's, but mine. <laughs> Is your lucky night. Sorry, you got the wrong number. What? Rianne, it's Christy. Christy, you? Murray. Oh, I thought you were busy tonight. I am, chocker. But that doesn't mean I can't spare half an hour for my favourite barmaid. Well, can I come up? False alarm. Well, who is he? What did he want? He's from camera. What? The campaign for relay. He was checking us out for next year's good pub guys. Really? Mm. Are we in? No. <laughs> They're all right, aren't they? Yeah. Maybe hey, we could be sisters in all of this, right? No, yeah. So, where do you want to go tonight then? Well, we're not staying out tonight. Oh, early night? No, I've got packing to do. Oh, come. Robert's taking me to Dublin tomorrow. Well, that's what Ben are doing, but it's a start. <laughs> I'm only going for the crack. Where are you getting the money for that? 
been working, haven't I? Look, if you've got something to say, say it. I'll have a pint. This was a warning. Someone could call at any time. And we'll be ready for them. Oh, no, we won't. Look, I think Fred should move into my flat properly. What for? Well, just in case. We've got to be on our guard. Bev, calm down, babe. We don't want to be invading on your life like this. You've done enough for us already. I'm worried, Lance. All we need to do is make it look like he lives there. An extra toothbrush in the bathroom. Fill a wardrobe and a couple of drawers with some of his clothes. Scatter a few of his knickknacks around. That should be enough. Do you think so? Yeah. Away. I hope you're not starting to regret all this. You're not repenting at your leisure, are you? I just don't want us to get caught, that's all. We'll be all right. All right, I best be getting off. Yeah, OK. Thanks for coming in, mate. No problem. Oh, listen, take it from me. Robbie is a good lad. Yeah, OK. Whatever you say. Any more visitors coming in tonight? No, no, not today. Rachel's coming in tomorrow afternoon. My dad and auntie are tomorrow night. They've got this rotor worked out. Not that any of them have ever got anything to say to me, like. How well do you have to the break-in? What break-in? Oh. Uh, yeah, I think I might get mixed up. No, oh, come on, Steve. Don't like the go but break-in. Oh, no, it was a different house. I can see it in your face. Look, they obviously didn't want you to know, did they? No, obviously not. They don't want me to know anything. I'm sick of this. Oh, come on, Steve, you sit down and you tell me what's happened. <sighs> oh, God. Do you fancy going out for a meal after? Well, like I said, I'm dead busy tonight. You know, this was like a flying visit. So, um, oh, maybe, maybe next week. Well, what are you doing? Well, uh, I'm uh, working night. Christy, who has me delivered of a night? We deliver, right, all the way up to the north of Scotland. And them jock butchers want fresh joints of meat first thing in the morning, which means me driving through the night. Well, when am I going to see you again? Ah, well, uh, that's the problem, you see. Um, uh, you know, like I say, we deliver all over the country. And, but the shift patterns, they've just gone all to cock because the guy who normally does them, he's, he's off sick with, um, with the runs. So, you know, I just, I just don't know when I'm going to be free. Christy, is this going anywhere? Look, first night off I get, I call you. Well, only if you want to. Of course I want to. Look, I'll get you some pork chops and a couple of racks of ribs. You know, since you, you slipped as a freebie earlier. OK. I'll see you then. Tra. You're just a pushover, that's your problem. Oh, well, I couldn't turf her out, she was crying. What'd you say to her? What can you say? Well, you usually think of something. She's at the end of her telemart. He's all confused. And she can't talk any sense into him because he won't listen to a word she says. He'll sort it out. I thought you might be able to have a word with him. What? Well, he might listen to a fella. <laughs> nah, you're not on. Man to man, like, you know, take him out for a pint sometime. No way, I'm not getting involved in all that. They're neighbours. Tie the man's off his head and you want me to take him out for a bevy? He's not himself, he's not thinking clearly. You might be able to put him back in the straight and narrow. <sighs> I'm a caretaker. A trick cyclist, what he needs. It won't do you any harm and it might do him some good. Take him out for a pint, find out what's going on. <laughs> They probably just didn't want to upset you. I am upset. I'm upset they treat me like a kid. It's me legs that don't work. There's nothing wrong up here. I mean, there's nothing you could have done. How would you like it if your half fella's been tied up in his own home and some smackheads have got a grip of your baby daughter and no one even thinks you've got the right to know? Do you know what? They come in here and they sit in here for hours on end and they can't think of anything to say to me and all the while that's been going on. I'm sorry, mate. Look, if there's anything I can do for you... Yeah, there is. You can help me. Do what? To get out of here. I'm sorry it's turned out like this, but I'm staying put. I'm finished with that hospital. Eight pairs of tights for ten quid. What's the catch? Yeah, the production line went a bit funny, and, uh, well, they've, uh, they've sort of come out three-legged. 
If Jimmy's under pressure, I'm not the one to help him. I'm not a shrink. What's been going on in my bedroom? Nothing. We didn't get fed up. She was carrying on. And Brookie is back on Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Next, Gene Hackman, Sarah Jessica Parker and Hugh Grant in the chilling thriller Extreme Measures. What are you doing? Looking for a hole for me and me hunk. Oh, aye, and who's that? Oh, you'll have seen him around. He's a real man. Who is it? Well, he's the type of fella who you never need to ask for pork scratchings with your belly. They're just there. <laughs> Sounds brilliant. So go on, who is he? Christy Murray. Oh, the little fella. Gorgeous, isn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's really nice. See you later. See ya. Oh, Lance. Has Fred got any maracas? Top so person. Look, we've got to make it look like me and him are a proper couple. And just start arguing with each other. Lance, I'm trying to be serious. Sorry. Look, clothes, shoes, knick-knacks, castanets, whatever he's got, I want them round at my place. All right, but he won't be able to do it right away. No, it's gone to boot. We're chasing a job. Oh, well, like you'll have to do it. Sharpish. Mm. Say no more. You've seen the cost of this Alecky bill. This is always the heaviest quarter. Too many lights being left on. We can't afford a bit like this, I won't have any ale money left. Have you seen Jimmy Corkle yet about a pint? No, um, I wasn't going to bother, especially seeing as I wear tight on our belts. This is different. I'm not discussing it with you again. You're going, so don't argue. Who? What? Where? The butt out. And ask first. I'm starving. There for your tea. Hey, you should have seen the state of this motor in work today. Three cars welded together. Bit of a death trap. Is it dark in here for you? No. Well, then, we don't need the light from the fridge, do we? Have you seen the Alecky bill? Um, it was on the fireplace in the living room. The cost of it? No. Has Trina rang? No, but... I might as well talk to the wall. Hold on, love. Some fella phoned three times. Who was it? It wouldn't leave his name. Just asked for you and hung up when it said you weren't here. Oh. Yeah, well done. Happy birthday, love. Oh, I didn't think anyone would remember. Ah, oh, didn't our Michael send you the car? He'll probably give it me when I go in to see him. <laughs> That's a face for. What have toilets and birthdays got in common? Men miss them both. <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Very funny. <laughs> He'll be bearing your bras next. We'll be what? <laughs> Taking a notice. Oh, there's another card for you. Oh, Bristol. You're from me, Mum. Ron, go and put the kettle on with you. I'm bringing a knife to cut the cake. Thought I was in charge here. Oh, brilliant. I'll be able to get the baby a couple of new vests. Oh, you should spend it on yourself. Yeah, get yourself a new dress or something. With a tenner. Right, I'd better get myself ready for my hubby. Well, you don't have to sound so chirpy about it. I'm missing him. And it's hard work visiting him when he's so miserable. Oh, men are the worst patients. That's what I really wanted for my birthday. What? Having Mike happy and back home. <laughs> oh. Brandy, double now. What's up? Oh, the head of that school I'm working in. Arrogant, conceited, nasty, duplicitous, <laughs> conniving, sneaky. Bad day. Then. <laughs> bad night, bad day. Oh, not that country in Western lot again. Yep. And it sounded as if they were driving cattle through the room as well last night. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. You sit there, I'll get you that drink. You can tell me all about it. 
<laughs> you should see the size of the Easter egg I've got him, and I've had both our names dripped on in my chocolate. Are you um, sure you're not getting carried away with this, babe? We're in love. Yeah, but it's early days. Lance, it's our names on an egg, not our marriage vows. Yeah, but, well, some fellas run a mile in this all this romantic stuff. They start feeling hemmed in. You have got Fred. Hmm, suppose I have. And he's yours, and Christie's mine. I know, but I just... Lance, will you just be happy for me, please? All right. Just don't want to see you getting hurt, that's all. And do you really think that some fella is going to get one over on me? There's Jimmy now. Go and ask him about that pint. Oh, he won't want to go. Try. Oh. Uh, Jimmy! All right, lads. Wet, innit? Yeah. Uh, your garden's looking, um, green. You okay? Yeah, a bit thirsty. How about you? I'm fine. <laughs> I'll see you. Hey, yeah, uh, do you fancy a pint? I could kill a pint, mate, but I'm on tablets, you know, medication, all that palaver. Oh, well, uh, hey, not to worry, eh? For ages, she could be watching us. Bev, everyone that comes through the door isn't a spy from immigration. They don't all wear badges, you know. See, she's gone. You're a bag of herbs. Oh, go and sort out Fred's stuff in the flat for me, will you? All right, I'll change this barrel first. I've made me mind up. It's going to be the Lorette de Mar. Dead romantic, I believe. Yeah, listen, will you do us a favour? Go on. We take all of Fred's stuff from our flat into Bev's. Why? Oh, cos we've got to make out that they're a proper couple. Well, there's no pretending with us. Hiya. Yeah. All right, now then, we've got a job lot here. We've got eight pairs of tights for ten quid. Ooh, that's cheap. What's the catch? Yeah, the production line went a bit funny and, uh, well, they've, uh, they've sort of come out three-legged. But you can get round that. Three-legged tights. What you do, right? You roll up the spare leg and you tuck it in the top. Have you ever got another reinforced gusset thing? Look, you can't sell them. Hey, it's not his fault. There you are. You try them, book she. Oh, the presents. Oh, I'm going to change the barrel. But will I pop upstairs and start shifting Fred's gear then, eh? Good. That'll make Bev happy. I was going for coffee then. Well, why don't you come upstairs to Bev's with me and we can have one there? Some of the boxes might be heavy. Well, you manage on your own, won't you? Oh, come on! It's a bit of time together. All right, but you'll have to buy me a pint of payment. It's my time's not my own, you know. All right, then. I'll take you shopping at the weekend and I'll get you a new shirt then, eh? Yeah, all right. Come on, then. Look, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I know that, but there's got to be a better way. OK, when Jimmy said he can't drink while he's on the pills. Yeah, and why is he on pills? Because he, uh... Well, because he cracked up, didn't he? And people crack up when they're under strain and pressure. Yeah, I'm, I'm going out. What about your tea? I'll have it when I get back. Oh. Guy, if Jimmy's under pressure, I'm not the one to help him. I'm not a shrink. I'm not asking you to psychoanalyse him or whatever. He's already said no. If he can only drink Lemo, get him Lemo. Look, I've had Jackie round here crying her eyes out on my shoulder, and this is your turn to help Jimmy out. It's something neighbourly you can do. And it might help him. Well, I thought these fellas wore Hawaiian shirts. Nah, he might be from Brazil, but he dresses dead boring. Sasumi? Nah. We need something a bit classier. Oh, do you know what? I'm knackered. Do you know what? I had to load all those tights onto the van myself. <sighs> You don't think you're going to sell any of them, do you? Hey, you cut up two pairs of them three legs, you'll end up with a pair of tights and a pair of stockings. Oh, aren't you clever? You've been dead good and cold, it's me. What's that? Prisoner of war camp. You know, the jerrys used to put people like myself there, you know, officer material. It's top security. And the thing is, our lads always needed people who could come up with escape plans, you know, on the spot. Entrepreneurs like myself. Well, did you ever fancy joining the army? I think SES would have been more up my street. Yeah, mind you, they sometimes had to do in women spies. You know, well, that's, that's not my style. 
Women are respecting, aren't they? Oh, you are lovely. Do you know that? What more proof do you need? Mm. It's comfy bed, this, isn't it? No, it's beds. Let's go back to mine. Where is your sense of adventure? <laughs> For 20 odd years of marriage, and you can get stale. You get to know all the moves in bed. Gets to be a routine, all that, you know. <clears throat> well, you know what it's like. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, not yet. Di and I have only been together for seven years. <sighs> well, good on you if it doesn't go stale like ours did. Is that what happened then? You and Jackie, you just sort of got fed up with each other. Yeah. Well, you covered it up well. From the outside, everything looked hunky dory. Felt like that on the inside. So did she pull the wool? <sighs> Look, Marty, I got out of hospital, yeah? And things were getting back on track, well, seemed to be getting back on track. All that taking each other for granted was out the window, and then. You're all right, mate. Don't have to talk about it. We didn't get fed up. She was carrying on. Yeah. The mother of my kids. Blessed Jackie Corkill was having an affair. <laughs> I'm not a prisoner. Yeah, but the doctor's OK about it. It's got nothing to do with them. Did you park the car on the side? Yeah. Right, let's go now. Oh. Well, that feels absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Good, are we? Mm. When did you learn to do that? My ex. How is Josie? Not started a civil war in Cornwall yet? <laughs> uh, she's happy now she's got Gemma. Mm, yeah. Once all the hard work bringing her up was done, in sweeps the caring, doting mother. Yeah, don't remind me. Anyway, what about this lot in the upstairs flat? Do we have to go there? I am stress-free now. I don't know how you stand it. All them songs about orphans and the dogs dying. It's doing my head in. I have a word. I did. I was told to stop whinging. Do what? Don't worry. I'll get it sorted. Can you put Falcon on the next order when I'm running a bit low? Char. Have you been sucking a lemon? What? I got up on you. What's up? Nothing. Oh, well, then. Cheer up, cos it's me that's under all the pressure. Oh, that's what I feel so bad about. We never thought all this Mary and Fred stuff through properly, did we? Yeah, well, it was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> and a bit of a laugh. When we first started, it was just, well, going to Southport, getting married, baby talk. Are you regretting it now? I just didn't think it got this heavy, you know, with the immigration and that. You're all regretting it, aren't you? No, I'm just worried, Lance. I hate the thought that officials could turn up at any time and question me and Fred. Yeah, but you're prepared for them, aren't you? <gasps> That's not the point. I wish we'd never started this. I should have just gone to Brazil. Oh, what would I do without me, Bessie? Well, you'd be a lot more relaxed. Look, the system's got it all wrong. You should be able to marry Fred and bring him back here as your fella, but, well, there's too many bigots and gay bashers and what have you in the world. I think the sky will fall in if two fellas get married. I, mind you, I'd be lying if I said the thought of what you two got up to between the sheets didn't knock me sick. <laughs> but look, I'm going to stick with this marriage thing with Fred because, well, I care about you and I want you to be happy. And I might get a bit panicky every now and then, but I'm telling you now, you can trust me. No matter how hard this thing gets, I'm going to stick with it to the end. Yeah, when something like that happens, it's like your whole world just stops. Sounds like you know, mate. I do. Your first wife had an affair. Do I? Heads or tails? Heads. You're breaking. So, um, did she tell you the south first? Well, I heard about it on the grapevine. 
So, you know, we had it out. <laughs> Big Barney. But in the end, I forgave her. I couldn't do that with Jackie. Well, I'm not saying you should. So what happened yeah. then? Did it just eat That's away at you? For a while, yeah. But she convinced me so much. It was the only one for her. That, in the end, I believed her. So why did you split? I came home early one day on her birthday. Found her in bed with another fella. Well, that's not your fault. I should have guessed. After the first affair, Penny Road had had enough, so I slung her out. Nice one. Sounds good to me, mate. Just wish I'd chin the fella that I found her in bed. Or oh, you didn't? No. Just stood there gobsmacked. I was standing there, watching them, doing the business, my mate, Vinny. And I just turned round and walked out the room. Be rude to interrupt. And uh, it was a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if I'd had any sense, I would have interrupted them with a baseball bat. So, do you know who it was that Jackie's doing the dirty on you with? Oh, yeah. I know who it is, all right. So, what do we do now? Just pull the arm off this, will you? I'm not going to be able to lift She's you in. Get on the other side, lean across and drag me in. Come on, mate. I'm not here, you know, mate. Don't worry, I can't feel anything anyway. Hurry up before someone pops us. So you fancy a drink and a bite to eat tomorrow? Lovely. Good. And uh, I don't like a head tea to get you down. <laughs> I won't. Thanks for the massage. Yeah, my pleasure. Hey, look, uh, if those country and western neighbour stars again, you call me and I'll be over there, day or night. I can handle it. Yeah, but it might make a difference if a man shows up. All right, no offence. If you need me. Thanks. See you later. Do you know anything about the stars? What, like uh, Tom Cruise and that lot? No, the star signs. Oh, no. Well, you should, cos me and you are matched. I think it's a cup of tea, we're going parched. Oh, Christy, what about our, um, oh, what do you call it, um, post coital moment? A what moment? Give us a kiss first. Oh. No, he's gone. As in, he's left the hospital, yeah. Yeah, his wheelchair is missing. No, they don't know where he is. They've got security looking around the hospital grounds. <sighs> where do you think he could have got to? Well, I don't know. What's happened? Oh, Michael's gone missing from the Aussie. What? Just a minute. Hello, Ra yeah, Rach. Yeah, look, love. Listen, no, listen. What is the ward sister saying? But he can't have just disappeared. Hello, That's love. Hi, Mr. Dixon. Um, I've got your mic in the car. Hey. Ron, Mike's here. You what? He's outside in Steve's car. Rachel, Rachel, he's here, love. Yeah, he's in the Murray lad's car. Look, just get a cab and get yourself home here, OK? Yeah, well, don't worry about the fare. Anthony will give it to you. Did they give you permission to come home? I didn't need it. What's going on, son? I've discharged myself, Dad. But there's nothing ready for you. I mean, what, what, what did the doctor say? Well, I never asked him. Can you get us in the chair, please? This is stupid. No, I know, Aunt, but I couldn't spend another day away from my family. Steve! Hi. Mr Dixon, I'll get the heavy end if you can get his legs. Mrs Dixon, just make sure the chair doesn't move. Well, of course. Right, are we ready? Yeah, just make sure you don't drop him. Up. I don't care, I'm home, are I? After three, one, two, three! Oh. Steady. You all right? Yeah. Right, let's get him inside before he freezes to death. But will the chair fit through the door? Well, if it doesn't, you just have to lift me out and carry me in. What are you doing here? He was helping me bring the stuff from the flat. Oh, OK. Thanks. You're welcome. This is not you, aren't you? Well, she just had a shock seeing you here, that's all. Do you fancy the pictures after? Do you know, I'd love to, but I'm chocker. You know, because I've got to deliver this van load of Easter eggs to, um, a shop, you know, in Birkenhead. Oh, well. Thanks for helping us, anyway. Yeah. Um, will I see you tomorrow? Well, time's a bit tight, eh? But, uh, you know, I'll see what I can do. Yeah. What's been going on in my bedroom? Nothing. Don't lie. 
These are like Nora Batty's and Defo, not mine. Bev, I'm sorry, I just got a bit carried away. Oh, in my bed? I feel sick. Well, it just happened. That linen was clean on this morning, and you two have been doing the Karma Sutra all over it. Oh, you're out of order. But if you know what it's like when you're just mad about each other. Yeah, but is the feeling mutual? Yeah? Leanne, has he ever taken you on a date? <laughs> he's busy, he's self-employed, you know. Mm, and I bet when you do get together, you know, when he's not busy, you end up sleeping with him. Yeah, but that's just passion and it's that mutual. He's using you. Look, there's probably dozens of people who are jealous of what me and Christy have got. But I never thought that you'd be one of them. I have just spent the last year of my life with the man who was using me. I can see the signs, but if you don't want to see them, there's nothing to see. But love... I will have to have a return. Next time I'll give you a good thrashing. Well, all right. You can try. Listen, you still wish you'd given that fella the hiding. Which one? The one you called with your missus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would have made me feel a lot better. It's dead raw, isn't it? So soon after. True, right? If you can find the fella, sort him. I couldn't. Why not? He's ruined your marriage. Don't want to get violent. Everyone would understand. Would they? Too right. Jimmy, how do you feel in there? Yeah. <sighs> Terrible. Angry? Yeah. Get rid of the anger. Find the fella and confront him. <sighs> I can't. Why not? He deserves a good kicking. What's the matter with you? It wasn't a fella. Jackie had an affair with a woman. Girl on girl, there's no action in my house. In my bed. Still think I should be kicking heads in? Why did you do it? I was worried sick. Because I'm sitting in the hospital with all sorts going on and no one's telling me. There's nothing going on, son. Dad, don't see me like an idiot. It's me legs that don't work, not me brain. I know about the burglary. It doesn't matter now. Why wasn't it told? We didn't want to worry you. Anthea, I've got a wife and a kid who live in this house. Don't you think I've got a right to know these things? It was my fault. I didn't want him to tell you. Don't you realise how useless that makes me feel? Yeah, well, we... we thought you might have some kind of relapse. Look, I can handle the truth, but not all the lies and all the stuff that go with it. I feel crap. I'm stuck in the hospital with these stupid things. And it's my wife's birthday and I'm not even here. People are breaking into the house, threatening me family, and I'm not here. Sorry, and we're wrong. You've made your point. Now, let's all just settle down, finish our tea, and we'll get you back to the hospital. What, you think I'm going back there? You'll have to. I'm staying here to look after my family. But we're not geared up to look after you, love. I'm sorry it's turned out like this, but I'm staying put. I'll keep on the couch and I'll do my own food. Whatever it takes, I'll do it. But I'm finished with that hospital. Don't you think you'd be better off back at the hospital, son? I can't go back. I wouldn't rest. He still can't get his head around the fact that Jackie had it off with another woman. Bev, married they? Eh? Unless one of these married is the convenience. You mean you knew about this? Why didn't you tell me? I said it's over. Now get out! Oh, you can't imagine how he looks at me. I don't know what to do. There's no Brookside tomorrow, but we've a double episode this Friday from 8 o'clock. Next on four, the new Audi A4 slugs it out against the Mercedes C-Class OS 60 in the Driven 100 with Jamie Theakston. Five minutes earlier, you'd have seen two. My mum was helping me. Oh, have I missed her? <laughs> What's come over you? Well, I sort of feel a bit differently about her now. Now that she's lent us the money. 
She's a gem. She's going to think she's got shares in the baby when we have it. Martin. Hey. You seen anything of Jimmy Corkin? Just putting the rubbish out. Did you speak to him? Just said hi, yeah. Is that all? He's probably still out, you know. I wasn't sure what else to say. Well, try something diplomatic, like, um, I'm sorry to say your wife's gone the other way. That's not funny. I still can't get over it. Be hard to trust Jackie after this. Why? Because she's a lesbian. No, but she came here crying, saying, Jimmy this, Jimmy that, like he was the villain. And all the time she's carrying on with another woman. I need a proper drink. To come round. Anthea, will you push a bit harder? I am doing. If you lift it, reduce the friction on the carpet. Hey, hey, hey. I know how to move furniture, you know, so don't start getting technical. Right. Let's have a blow. And when I say push, just push. Dad, I was all right on the mattress on the floor, you know. You need the bed, son. The last thing you want to do is make your back any worse. Yeah, all right, Anthea, come on. Ready? And push. Hey, hey, all right, all right. I've got a hard condition, you know. Sorry. Right. Now, what's the best way? Well, Mike should just go back in the kitchen and we can set this up. I know that. I was just thinking aloud, that's all. Right. Michael, if you go back in the kitchen, we'll set this up. Before you do that, I'm going to put the kettle on. Dad. What? Well, I, um... Well, go on. I need the toilet again. You sure? Yeah, I'm sorry. Mike, don't you think you'd be better off back at the hospital, son? But I can't go back. I wouldn't rest. Will you give us a hand up the stairs? It's too much for you, love. Well, what am I going to do, Aunt here? You'll have to use a bucket. What? Well, if you keep going up and down the stairs to the loo, you could cause all sorts of damage to your spine. A bucket? Well, it's either that, son, or you're seriously going to have to consider going back to the Aussie. Well, as soon as possible. I've just been down the travel agents and I've seen a holiday for me and Christy and I want to get the deposit on tomorrow. Where are you going? Spain. Well, I hope your fellow's paying the balance. Well, he doesn't know. It's a surprise. Leanne! Bev, will you stop flapping? Are you going to give me the advance or what? Please. Yeah, go on then. I'll give you it tomorrow. Brilliant! <laughs> Hiya! That's this. Let's get out there. Any chance of more change? Did you know your sister's going to Spain? When? Mm, that's not the problem. It's who she's going with. <sighs> Christy. Mm hmm But he doesn't know it yet. She's going to surprise him. Oh, she can't afford it. We've got rent to pay. Oh, she's stuck on him. I know. And he knows it. And he's filling his boots. Do you think I should say something? Oh, <laughs> she won't listen to me. This is the flute. And at the beginning of a shift, we check it and we note it in the cash booth. And there's 50 pounds in here. Well, it says 50 pounds on the bag, but if it's short, it'll be out of your pocket when the till's checked, so always count it out. I've helped in my mum's salon before, so I've worked with money and tills. Oh, that's good. Hi, love. Well, we're for a point. Oh, that's right. Do you not want a receipt? Yeah. <laughs> right. Hi, Mrs. Corkill. Hello. Hello. How's Mr. Corkill? Um, he's all right. I saw him before. He didn't look too happy. No, well, he's got a lot on his mind. So, is he going back to the mental hospital? Anthony, what can we do for you? Please, I'm a customer when I'm here. Oh, what would you like, please, say? Jewies, please. I'll help you, sir. Fifty pounds, there. Eh? Oh, that's great, love. Well, right, um, so where's the cash? Put over to me. Bye, Mrs. Corkill. Ciao, love. A thriving resort, it says. Ta. But plenty of romantic walks. Sounds gorgeous, but what about the rent? I paid it. Well? Well, I've come up on the horses again. Again? How come you didn't tell me? 
Well, 2001's my lucky year. Mm, I'd love to go abroad. Oh, me man at me side. I'd give anything for a holiday with Mike and the baby. Oh, and you look like you could use one as well. I'm off soon. I'll be all right. She looks knackered. Um, is your um, Just sure you're not getting ahead of yourself with this, Christy? What did you think the first time you saw Fred? Oh, well, that's different. No, love's the same whatever way your Batman's. What did you think? Well, he was someone I could spend the rest of my life with. Enough said. Yes. Auntie shouldn't have to do this, you know, Dad. Well, you know I'd have done it, but you know how forceful she is. She doesn't want to see me up and down the stairs with this ticket of mine. It was all right, in the Aussie. But your family shouldn't have to do all this personal sort of stuff. And there's no way around it, son. Not if you want to stay on. I didn't think of things like this, did I? Well, you're gonna have to get used to it. Look, I think we're gonna have to get you to come out. Where from? Well, we'll have to bring the board and see what they say. <sighs> come out. Needs more sun. Coming down for your tea? Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, looking for my homework. This place was a picture yesterday. I'm going to tidy it again. When? Does it matter? I don't want your mum doing it, that's all. Don't want her to do it either. Because you're a big boy now and she's got loads to do. OK. Tea. Five minutes. Dad? Yeah? You always love me. Of course. Even if I do something really bad. Did you forget to say your prayers last night? I don't mean that. Well, what then? Being cheeky. Or forgetting to tidy your room or feed the dog. <laughs> Mums and dads love their kids, no matter what they do. Do they? Well, yeah, we'd like it to be good all the time, but... Don't worry. There's nothing you could do that would stop either me or your mum from loving you. OK? Tea. Five minutes. I said I'd move the bed down with Anthea. I didn't want you straying in anything. Oh, you should have waited, Mr Dixon. You all should have waited. I said if it came to this, I'd get Steve Murray and his dad to bring it down. Yeah, we don't need them when we got family. Why do you have to be so bloody obstinate? Common sense says you shouldn't be carrying things up and down stairs. You're not fit, right? I'll, um, I'll just get me a drink. Yeah, I'll get it. Rach, I'm OK. How's <laughs> uni? Yeah, not too bad. I've got a couple of projects to you in, like. You keeping up to date with them? Of course I am. Yeah? Hey, you got a 2-1 for me last essay. Oh, what was it? Language as a form of social control. <laughs> well done. Do you want a cup of tea? Oh, two sugars, please. I thought you were giving it up. I like it. Didn't think I'd see you back in education. I wasn't really interested after my dad died. You weren't even interested in me. I was. I just... I couldn't handle you crying. It's normal. <laughs> I know that, but I was trying my best not to cry, and then I'd hear you breaking your heart in your room. I needed you to come in. We could have cried together. <laughs> no way. I felt bad enough crying on my own. You men. I know. Just don't miss him. You bet. I miss his corny jokes. <laughs> he had some bad puns, <laughs> didn't he? And I miss the way he used to shout at the telly when a politician he hated was on. Well, I've got some bad news for you. What? I've started doing it. Oh, no. <laughs> Nicky hates it. <laughs> yeah, that's my sympathy. Oh, over your mouth, you used to tell me. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm shattered. Neighbours again. Why were they like? Oh, it's time to get me down. You won't mention this, will you? Hey, hey. Good early, aren't you? Mm. Came straight from the lion's den. And I was the demon head teacher then. Civil? And did the uh, lion dancers help you sleep? Oh, well, things are looking up, aren't they? <laughs> I got in touch with the ward. They'll contact us about the commode. Oh, well done, love. And they want you to go back in for a physio assessment. When? 
Next week, I've got to phone him back. Good. I can't stay there, but then again, I don't want to put myself back, do I? So was the Aussie all right about the great escape? Not really, but they understood. Thought they might have washed their hands of me. Good job they never, otherwise I'd have been round there. So what's been happening around here, then? Not a lot. Oh, Bev got married. You what? what? Yeah. She's met some Brazilian fella and she's married him. You mean you knew about this? Why didn't you tell me? Because I knew you'd overreact. Are you serious? Yeah, she's known in five minutes and the man and wife. <sighs> Bev married, eh? Well, it's one of these marriages the convenience that he can stay in the country. restocking with me. So you enjoying it? Well, still our Anthony came in. What for? Said it was for Cheery, but he just wants to make a show of you. I'll get it. And did he really make a show of you? You know what he's like. Just stands there and says dead embarrassing things. I won't serve him next time. <laughs> as long as he's polite, you'll have to serve him. Best of for you. Hiya. I love him. Hiya. Ever come at a bad time? No, not at all. I'll, uh... I'll go and see our kid. There's a footy team meeting down the bar. OK, love. See ya. Ta-da. Ta-da, mm. love. You sure you don't mind a chat? Of course not. Adele's got revision, so we can have a bit of peace and quiet. Can I have a word? What about? In private. So what's it about? It's about this fella you married. Yeah, and? Well, he's... Go on, spit it out. Well, is he the right sort of person to be bringing up our Josh? Josh is my son, and my husband will make a brilliant father. He's limp-wristed. What's that got to do with anything? Look, I don't want our Josh being brought up by some puffy dago. Do you mind? What? I haven't come out to listen to your racist filth. No, no, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about a Brazilian. I don't care what nationality he is. Keep your vile comments to yourself when you're in public. All right, all right, keep your hair on. I think that's enough. Ron, mind your own business. Hey, listen, Bev, this is my business. I have a team on this one. Do you know him? He lives across the road from us. He's really enjoying myself till then. Don't let him bother you. I'm gonna get off to Stennis. Why, hey, Mum, don't be getting off just because of him. Um, I've got to go anyway. Hey, I'm sorry, it's not just him. My friendly neighbours were playing their music again last night. I might cake them. Oh, I'm gonna have to contact the landlord. What's the point? You'd just be swapping letters. I mean, it could take ages. I'm gonna miss my bus. I'll phone you. You stuck the keys to your mum's flat. Somewhere, why? Let's go and get them. So what did your fella say they talked about? I, I think it was football. Jimmy talking about football? Well, Marty probably did most of the gabbing. It's all he ever talks about. <laughs> so he didn't say anything about um, any of our problems? Well, you know what fellas are like when they talk about their feelings. What? <laughs> well, they don't really, do they? seen in my life. And that for the man who put the black down two games on the trot. Yeah, but that, that table isn't level. <laughs> Thanks for getting you. No, I'm fine. Do you want me to bring some drinks over? Yeah, totally concentrate on the game, yeah. Sorry, I just wondered. Yeah, well, I'm out with the lads, you know, so, you know, go and serve someone else. 
Oh, what was that all about? What? You seem to bank you a bit there. No, you got a well bunk. Don't be a doormat, Leon. <laughs> it's not right. I mean, how much English does this fella speak? Ron, you've checked all the windows and doors. Yeah, well, I might have missed one. Scottish, Welsh, Irish, but Brazilian. What the hell is she playing at? Does it matter as long as he's good to Josh and Bev? But it's not right. Marriage is serious, not all this nonsense she's getting up to. Not to keep that Lance fella happy. There's nothing you can do. Isn't there? I mean, I don't want you to break Marty's confidence, but... He's got to remember that... Jimmy gets the wrong end of things. What do you mean? He's still on tablets. So? He was in a psychiatric unit. But he tells the truth, doesn't he? Oh, I'm, I'm not saying he means to tell lies, but... He's not completely well, you know. Which is why he's still taking tablets. And sometimes... He says things that can't be right. I mean, they're just not true. And it can be so weird. You can't imagine how he looks at me, Dad. He's cold, you know. He's so cold. I don't know what to do. Thanks, love. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, you're all right, love. No, it's me, so I'll get off. Are you sure? Yeah, thanks. See you again. Yeah. Thanks for listening, Lord. Any time. Any time. Are you soft? She was holding you down. Don't be at it. No, all right. So I might have been overreacting, but... What if she did make a play for you? And what about our Adele? Is she safe with her? Behave. She's going through a big bust-up. You can see she's in bits. Hello? Yeah, it's Christy. Go let us in. Wrong flat. Okay. The flow. What's happened? I got home. The, the door had been kicked in. You what? My stuff is trash thrown everywhere. They kicked the door in? Yeah. I, I still can't believe it. I bet you this has got something to do with those idiots upstairs. Why? Well, you saw them, man. They're still slamming the door in our face. This is pure spite, man. Well, what are you talking about? We went round and, um, well, we paid your neighbours a visit. To do what? To tell them they were out of order. I asked you to stay out of this, didn't I? They were taking liberties with you. So you, Mr Big Stuff, went round there and gave them what for, did you? Mum, somebody had to tell them. And now my place is burgled and trashed. See any connection? Oh. If I ever want you to fight my corner, I'll ask. My place is an absolute mess. Idiot! He must have cried. Who? God. When you left heaven. Christy. Hey. Is, uh... Joe Kidd the posh fella in? No, boy. Oh, good. Oh, Leanne. 
you uh, you just, you know, like, you know, all them women, you know, that go in the bar, slags. You just, you stand out in the crowd. You're my Leanne. Maybe you should just go. Whoa, 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 I thought I was your number one. You are, but... Come on, then. Let's do the biz. Hey, hey, do you know the other day, in, uh, uh, uh Bev's bed? Ace. Christy, please. I don't want this. I want you to respect me and, and to take me out. But that's gonna come. You don't want me as a girlfriend, do you? Leanne. You didn't even want to know me when you were with your mates, either. It wasn't like that. We were, we were playing pool. You don't have women round when you're playing pool. I'm just a joke, aren't I? Some fat slag who you can jump into bed with whenever you feel like. Well, not anymore. It's over. What? I said it's over. Now get out. Get out! Get out! Get out! I hate you! Get out. Just, 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 just. Jackie's as good as said that Jimmy still isn't right in the head. He's the same as you and me. She's his wife. She should know. She's got an axe to grind. Yeah, but think about it. Do you really think Jackie's turned into a lesbian? I mean, she must be well into her forties. What's that got to do with it? I don't know. Forget I said that. I mean, Jimmy's probably saying she's the other way, because things can get dirty when people are splitting up. Di, I was with them for ages. So? So, he still can't get his head around the fact that Jackie had it off with another woman. He's telling the truth. You can't be sure. I'd put money on it. <laughs> no man would make up something like that. I don't know. If you'd have been with me, you'd have seen how it killed him to tell me about Jackie. She's telling the lies and she's making a fool out of you. But, if you've still got doubts, ask her. Outright. It's about getting a divorce. What's up? The heap, so. Has someone been upsetting you? I want if the immigration comes snooping around. Oh, they will. Well, what if they do? Fred's on his way home and I'm in deep trouble. Look, I want to be with me family. You should have stayed in hospital until you could use crutches like the doctors told you to. And all that from Tuesday at 8. Next Friday at 8.30, a weekend challenge if ever there was one. Can you live without sex? A preview coming up. Attempting offering next on Ford Friday, comedy begins with friends. <laughs>